Hi, I'm Tom Plunkett. I'm here to talk today about a project we did last summer uh, which analyzed relationships between genes and different types of cancer. Uh, we won an award for this and we were nominated for several other awards, so I thought I'd share it with you tonight. Uh, our, our project was selected over, from over 80 different government projects that were nominated for the award. Uh, we had a number of judges who've been following the industry for some time and are pretty uh, familiar with what the government's doing in the big data space. Um, so we were pretty happy. And the team that won the award uh, was led by Oracle and the uh, Frederick National Laboratory for Cancer Research outside of DC, uh, which is operated by SAIC on behalf of NCI. So uh, in addition to those two groups, we also had some other participants in doing the research and working on the actual project last summer. Uh, we had several uh, people from University of Maryland and Rochester Institute of Technology that helped us as well. So that's the overall team that did the project. Um, and what we were really focused in on was how could we help researchers who are looking into personalized medicine. Uh, our focus was specifically on you know, looking at the, the decreasing price of genes over time and seeing, well, what can we do from a personalized medicine to help that from a big data perspective? And are the slides advancing or are they stuck? So I'll just keep on going. Uh, so so um, here we go. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, for those of you who haven't, haven't been paying attention to the price of gene sequencing, you know, over 10 years ago, you were talking upwards of a billion dollars. Uh, now it's looking below $10,000, and it's rapidly approaching you know, $1,000 or less in the next couple years. So personalized medicine is going to be a reality. And so what we wanted to do was look at how can you use big data to analyze um, you know, the information that's out there that relates the drugs you would use for specific types of cancer based on the type of genes that were involved. And I think, the, so here's the first thing we did. So we talked about the problem. Um, this description of the problem was provided by a research scientist with uh, National Cancer Institute. And so this is how the research scientist describes the problem, you know, focusing in on microwave expression and so on. Here's an English translation of what the research scientists actually meant. They wanted us to pr uh, provide a co-occurrence relationship between known cancer types and the genes that they're involved with. And then to be able to visually display that information. And then this is a description of what a data scientist would describe that problem. So here we have the data scientist describing what the deliverables and the process would be to build those relationships and display them um, to someone who's interested. The data sources we used are described on this slide. You know, we had to use a, a lexicon to describe different uh, subtypes of cancer by all the different names that are involved. We use PubMed journal information for research on the different uh, uh, projects. Um, from a hardware and software perspective, we used Apache Hadoop and R on Oracle technology. So that covers the data sources we looked at and the technology we used to do the project. Um, so the second half of this presentation is really talking all about the results. You know, I showed you the team, I showed you what we did. Um, so now we're going to go through several slides that kind of cover, you know, different gra our graphs. Um, this particular one is showing, you know, the, the uh, re amount of articles we had uh, related to different types of cancer. Um, then we have, but that's not very dis uh, de depictive. Here we have a much more descriptive uh, co-occurrence matrix where we're listing uh, the, the different genes up at the top, the different types of cancer on the left-hand side, and then the size of the dots shows you, you know, how much information there was there. But even that doesn't really show your relationships. Here we have the relationship diagram where you can see all the different, uh, you know, genes and which cancers are the little green bubbles that they're related to. So for instance, over on the right-hand side, you see there's a green bubble that has a tremendous number of genes related to it, as well as that sort of web in the middle. Um, so this slide kind of blows up, you know, which cancers are where. So for instance, lung cancer was the one that has a tremendous amount of relationships to a, a wide range of genes um, across the uh, research that we looked at. And you also see some outliers. 
Now, from a substantive perspective, Nash, the National Cancer Institute was very happy with the information they could get. You know, they were very happy to be able to display all this information and the different relationships there are between the genes and the drugs and the different cancer types. But that's only half of the story of what we did. The second thing we did was we, uh, we did a lot of monitoring of the different processes uh, that we were working with. We looked at the performance of Hadoop across the clusters uh, for the algorithms, N not just the relationships algorithms, but also we generated some microexpression uh, population and DNA population for sample test populations. And so we looked a lot at you know, how that uh, translated into a performance perspective on the hardware and software. Um, and we were very happy to find out that it does transform uh, linearly. You know, we went up uh, to, you know, significant amounts of information and we, we saw linear scaling all the way up. Um, and when we talked to uh, the National Cancer Institute about it, they were very impressed because they were able to provide visual representations of information that they really couldn't access before uh, with an incredible speed at very low cost. Um, so they were very impressed with big data. If anyone has any questions about this project, please feel free to uh, send me an email on it. We've got a couple academic articles that are coming out, and there's been a number of press releases over the last six months about it as well. Thanks.